Good evening, how are you? The clip that you have just seen is not from a team that is already relegated in May. This is from two days ago, on the first game of the season. It's not looking good at QPR. Queen's Park Rangers, a team that most people only think of when you think of Sergio Aguero. Yes, if I was a QPR fan, that would annoy me too. And if you don't believe me, type up QPR on Google and go onto images and I guarantee it's there. This is Gareth Ainsworth. Yes, he may look like a punk rock goth or a extra from Lord of the Rings or all of the above. And right now, the current manager of QPR. However, by the time of recording, I'll be surprised if this is still here for a week. Oh yeah, also one thing, he is mental. You may think I'm lying. So let me show you. Yes, that is the hacker. The hacker. You know, the thing that New Zealand players do. This is the QPR team doing the hacker. Here's the hacker man when he walked into the room. And look at the reactions of the players. What the fuck is going on? Hey, hi there. Before we do go any further, please do smash a like on this video and also drop a sub. We've just hit 370,000 subscribers. Let's try to hit 400k by, I mean, at least the end of the year. I think that's more than possible. And also tell me down below your thoughts on QPR. Gareth Ainsworth surely can't be there any more longer. And of course, MazolaDesigns.co.uk. You guys loved the 20% discount code for the Terry's video. So let's do it again. QPR is the code. 20% off on all orders for the next 48 hours. Of, of course, if you're a QPR fan, I got you covered. Bobby Zamora v Derby, of course it's here. The print and also a feature player print as well. Link down below, top of the description. And of course, 400 different items too. Take your pick. And let's get into the video. Before we do get into the here and now, let's go into what has got QPR in this position in the first place. Many of you may think of QPR as a team which had a... A fun time during the 2012-13 season when he bought a lot of players for, at the time, was a good amount of money. Of course, we're speaking about the Adele Terraps of the streets, we not forget days. In the 2010-11 season, QPR got promoted thanks to Adele Terrap being Adele Terraps. Please, if you haven't watched the compilation, then please go and watch it. It's so fun. In which they won a championship in reasonably comfortable fashion as well. 88 points. Who is the manager? You know who it was, Neil Warnock. However, in the Premier League, it didn't go too well for him as he did get sacked back in January. After losing 2-1 to Norwich at home, he had to go. You simply can't lose to Norwich. Anyway, who's here? Mark Hughes. How you doing, pal? And their team had a good variety of players. DJ Campbell from Blackpool, who had a great time in the Premier League beforehand. Sean Wright Phillips. Anton Ferdinand, you may remember quite a bit. And in January, going big with Babi Zamora, Cissé and a Anuaha. Anuaha. I think that's how you say his name. But the main man was a man called Helgerson. Quick little quiz if you can guess which nation he's from. It's of course Iceland. Helgerson had a crazy record. 13 starts and 8 goals in the Premier League. That's actually insane. That's, re that's really good. Jamie Mackey also deserves a special mention. Oh yeah, as well. They also had Tyrell. Yeah, Tyrell, the AC Milan left back that you remember back on FIFA. He was there too. Anyway, they stayed up. You probably know how. Let's play the clip. And the next season, they sacked Mark Hughes, they put in Harry Redknapp, and still went down. 20th. Jennifer Hoyler, Lloyd Remy, Christopher Samba, Jason Park. Jason Park? Julio Cesar, Fabinho, Bossingua, and Andros Townsend, Jermaine Genus. They won four games all season. In the next season, they had to bounce back. And did they? Yeah, obviously. Big signings like Charlie Austin, Matt Phillips, and next thing you know, Zamora. Back in the Premier League and they are here to stay. They signed Anton from the land, so of course they signed Rio, obviously. Nico Crancia, Isla, Isla, I think, from Juventus. Eduardo Vargas from Napoli. And bigger players like Sanjo, Leroy Fur, Stephen Corker, and Jordan Much from Cardiff. This didn't work out so well, as again they went down. And this is when the problems kind of hit. Due to their signings back at the time of FFP, they had a big problem with something called a wages to turnover ratio. QPR's wage bill in 13-14 of £75 million was the 8th highest in the Premier League, spending insane amounts on wages to bring in players, and because it didn't work out, it 
kind of creates a problem. This was found and they later were ordered to pay a 40 million pound FFP fine back in 2017. Continuing on from that, they also had a transfer embargo back in 2018 as well. So this means that about 7 million pounds go straight towards paying this off for the next couple of seasons. And that is something that we've seen in the last couple of years since they went down since 1415. Back in these days, Palshire payments did exist, but it wasn't as incredible as it is now. So simply put, they had to really sell players to buy players. This means the likes of Matt Phillips, Leroy Furr, Alex Smithies, Luke Freeman, and of course the biggest of them all, a certain baller called Eze. To state how big this really impacted QPR, back in 1920, they only spent 60 thousand euro across the entire year relying only on free transfers and loans if you think this is bad back in 1819 they also only had five incomings on loans and free transfers with zero spent across any transfer fees 1718 only 500 thousand grand spent they did spend relatively decent size to get back to Premier league spending about 15 14 mil back in 1516 when like so longo connor washington alex smithies but it just never worked out so throughout this four to five year period qpr was pretty much stagnant 12th place, 18th place, 16th place, 19th place, 13th place, 9th place and 11th place. Some exciting players here or there, but it never really came together. But in the 2022-23 season, things got tasty. QPR welcomed a man called Michael Beale, who was the Aston Villa assistant coach. And during his time at Villa with Steven Gerrard, many people thought that he was the real genius behind his success at Rangers, as he also followed Gerard at Rangers too. QPR's team for the season was relatively exciting with some decent young players in there that can, with potential, get better. That is the key word for all of this to keep in mind. Young. Potential. Maybe not proven for the here and now. Under Michael Beale, they started incredibly. Okay, maybe not the first games where they lost to Blackpool and then drew to Rotherham, but then Watford away happened. Again, no, not from last weekend. <laughs> Some decent players in Elias Chair, Chris Willock, some decent young defenders in Jimmy Dunn and Ethan Led. That's a lot that they can crack on. They continued throughout the month of September and October by winning a ton of games. Despite losing away to Luton, they went on and won six out of eight games. That is an incredible run of form in a championship, and with this, they were in the top two. Actually, even better. In late October, they were top of the championship with 16 games played after beating Wigan 2-1. It did look like things were on the up massively for QPR. And then Birmingham away happened. And Birmingham, Birmingham away can always be a tricky team. I mean, on paper, they had more possession, more shots, so maybe it was just an unfortunate game. And then they didn't beat Norwich away. Still a tough team, it's fine. Then they lost to West Brom at home. Okay, West Brom is still a tough team. No, they still got some good players. Then they lost to Huddersfield at home, and it was at this moment that it got a bit concerning. Even with a poor run of games, they were still in a relatively healthy position in the championship. I mean, it ended pretty poorly, but hey, after the World Cup break, they can have a bit of time to actually maybe rethink and get in some players that could be a bit tired or injured, and then restart again for the new season. Keep in mind that throughout the World Cup, they were 7th. They were 7th place. They were pretty much in the playoffs still. But I do know that QPR fans will be screaming something very important at me. That there is one key thing that I've kind of missed out on this entire couple of games. Around the same time period for that Birmingham away game, there was a lot of interest from Wolverhampton Wanderers in Beale. A lot of people were concerned that he would go and move from QPR and would jump ship. And he actually committed in fact, to staying. QPR fans loved him for his loyalty, making even banners. Well, something was happening behind the scenes. Wolves, he could turn down. But Rangers is a different story. So throughout that winter World Cup break, Beal left QPR to go to Rangers. And this is when it gets a bit sad for QPR. Now, maybe it was a problem to be having Burnley at home for the first game that went on to win the league. Pressing away, 1-0 win, they're back onto it. So they didn't win for 11 games. And this is where our special best friend comes in. Gareth Ainsworth, no, actually, no, it's a man called Neil Critchley. I'm not gonna speak too much about Neil Critchley because he's pretty much forgettable, but he was at Blackpool. He did a relatively decent job. They went to Aston Villa from being a manager at Blackpool. So then when Beal went to Rangers, QPR thought, well, we signed one guy that was an assistant coach at Aston Villa that did well. Let's do it again. And Critchley were hired. And then fired about two months later. And now comes Gareth Ainsworth. 
And here's the hacker. Oh Just look at the cringe. It's so beautiful. Okay, QPR was in a pretty rough spot. And their first game, they lost their home to Blackburn and then lost their way to Rotherham. But they did beat Watford 1-0. And maybe the tide was turning. That new manager bounce is now arrived. And the next game got Blackpool away. That's got to be a good result, right? That, that They can take them on. They can go and beat Blackpool. They lost 6-1. Yeah, <laughs> they lost 6-1 to Blackpool, who Blackpool was also, like, dead in the relegation zone as well. Until for some reason, and as a Burnley fan, I, I thank them for this, because we then beat our main rivals and won the league at their ground next, next week, but... They beat Burnley away. To this day, I still have no idea how, but they did it. Threatened to be relegated despite them being top of the league in October. Hey, maybe there's some hope there. And now it's Watford. <laughs> The main issue is with QPR financially because of their spending from years ago with FFP, that is still a massive issue with them because as of right now, they still have spent nothing in the market and only relying on free transfers and loans. When QPR received the £16 million for Eze, that was a big moment for them. A big moment for them to really use that money wisely and bring in players for some fees to try to crack them on. And they almost did that. With Michael Beale, they had something working. Many QPR fans claiming that he's a snake. And I get that completely. Many people, understandably, point their fingers at the board, claiming that even with a lack of money, they are still lining up their pockets. And the fact that they are still in quite a lot of debt, and with revenue being so low already in the championship, if they do go down this year, it'd be a really tough situation for them. And then there's the managerial appointments, which the likes of Gareth Ainsworth going to QPR for me is just kind of mental because his playstyle that worked at Wickham Wanderers that he had a pretty successful time at doesn't really work for QPR as he plays a more direct style of play really getting it up fast to a big man to hold it off and that's kind of how they play. With QPR they don't have the players really for that they have quite technical creative players in the likes of Elias Chair and Chris Willock and in his current playstyle their plan of action is to simply hoof it up to the big man in Dykes right now and he's not really that big to do that in the first place and he's not really that amazing so they're, 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 I don't know what their SAT plan is but as you can see by this graph by Opta last weekend in terms of playstyles it's clearly not working and the fact that he's still there speaks a lot and I just need to show you this interview by Ainsworth because it's just brilliant because keep in mind this is not a manager that is in February, March and are pretty much going down. This is the first game of the season. The first game. Well, that first half, we were ripped apart. We don't know whether we've just played the league winners, you know. They're, they're a good side. They look a real good side. And we're still short of one or two, I think, to add to the squad, you know. And uh, listen, I, I know it's going to be tough. I know it's going to... We all do. Uh, just a bit of patience because I'm building. I've learned a lot today again. And, and I'll keep building, I'll keep working. First game of the season, okay, we've lost it. And we've lost it heavily, right? Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Give that to me. Stay off my players' back, please, because they're trying to give me everything. And we will start winning games, believe me. I am to be on this, you know. I am to be winning enough games to make this club championship status. And that's what we've got to do. But we can even outdo that. We don't know if we just played the league winners is a fantastic excuse. I, it's incredible. Going on about keeping QPR up, despite them being a relatively stable side in the championship for the last near decade, it's not exactly what you want to hear from a QPR perspective the first game of the year. And again, here's the fans that day. So financially, QPR are still in quite a mess, still in debt and paying off FFP. And in a situation that they had to sell players to really buy players They've not got many assets. The main obvious ones are the likes of Chris Willock and also Elias Chair, but without them, what hope do they really have? Not much. Their next game, as we speak, is against Cardiff City away, and if they do lose there, it may get really sticky, as they got Ipswich at home, which should look like a great side, and then some big, hard games in the likes of Southampton, Middlesbrough, Sunderland, Swansea, Birmingham, and Coventry and also Leeds. There's a good chance that I may speak in September, late September, and QPR could be about 
five, six points of drift at the bottom of the table. That is very likely. Anyway, so tell me your thoughts down below in the comments about QPR and their current situation. Do you see them going down this year? I think they are in a real mess right now, but maybe if Ainsworth gets sacked at a relatively fast rate, then they still may have a chance of staying up as they do have some decent players there, some decent creators, so it may not be too late. But tell me your thoughts down below and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Peace out.